Okay, good morning. Let us uh, resume our discussion. So, what were we discussing in the last class? Can uh, a couple of you brief uh, the points, main points that we discussed in the last class? Yeah, quickly. Can one of you or a couple of you recap some of the uh, details that we discussed in the last class? Okay, what did we discuss? Any uh, no other no points? Uh, we discussed some about edges. Okay, we discussed about edges, and then what did we say uh, about edges? What are what for we are uh, finding edges? We get the boundaries of an object and detect it using that person oh, or feature person and the features. Right. So we discussed about uh, edges as a processing step, a uh, pre-processing step, as well as that is helpful for feature extraction. Okay. Good. What else? What else did we discuss in the last class? Uh, uh, camera uh, and classification. Oh. Camera. So, how does uh, okay? Oh, can you repeat, uh, Vaibha, what the point you mentioned? Uh, alignment of the pictures, uh, intensity changes. Uh, those all should also be accounted. Right. So, essentially, we discussed the importance of pre-processing when we want to perform any inference task. Okay. What else? Any other points? Okay. So we also discussed about the importance of feature extraction uh, in uh, making inference that is through finding the boundaries and so on. Uh, of course, we will also, we also highlighted uh, a uh, mm, uh, little bit on the challenge that uh, a uh, image based inference or a video based inference has. Mm, so in, uh, in terms of uh, occlusions or in terms of uh, the uh, alignments or in terms of noise and so on. So essentially, in this class, let us uh, review the course content again, uh, and then let's move on to the discussion on how the field of computer vision has evolved. Uh, I will also try to discuss with some of the examples, either that are done from our group, uh, previous students, or from some of the uh, mm, uh, mm, some of the researchers in the field. Uh, to illustrate on uh, how the computer vision, uh, what are the different computer vision tasks and uh, how they are of, which are of uh, importance in this field. Uh, so what are the conventional ways of doing in very brief, uh, very high level picture of uh, the developments in computer vision. Uh, so we will be discussing as uh, mentioned in the last class also. Initially, we start with the pre-processing or image processing uh, details. So we will discuss some of the aspects of say, if there is a uh, poor contrast or if there is a uh, requirement of finding particular uh, 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 particular patterns in an image. How do we do that? How do we uh, remove noise? Uh, how do we find it? Just these kind of details, essentially mainly on the pre-processing uh, uh, task for any uh, subsequent inference. Uh, we discuss as the initial uh, discussion or initial during initial classes. We will see based on the, uh, as I mentioned, the Fourier transform uh, based analysis is uh, important. Mainly, uh, of course, it's a also a very good uh, pre-processing step and it is also useful for some of the image processing tasks uh, and also subsequently helpful for inference as well. But however, we will see based on, we will discuss probably at the end because that requires a little bit slightly of different treatment than conventional uh, um, uh, discussion. Uh, that is done in spatial domain. We uh, then discuss on the feature extraction part. So we see, uh, say, if we are given an image, so is uh, the whole image important to be uh, mm, uh, analyzed of equal importance uh, for a computer to make inference? The answer uh, is not uh, yes, uh, may not be yes all the time. So we will see where to we should look for information so and also we see what information should we look at there so where to look and where how what to look is uh, in an image 
is of importance uh, in feature extraction that we will discuss subsequently. So there are some elegant uh, methods that are developed in the uh, literature uh, that's in fourth module. And then we will see with the uh, extracted features and uh, performing pre-processing, we'll complete the pipeline of making inference for a simple computer vision task like classification and recognition. So that is uh, to complete that we will discuss about neural networks and probably I will introduce convolutional neural networks as well. But I will not discuss uh, too much details on convolutional neural networks in this course that is uh, reserved or that will be discussed in the next course on deep learning or machine learning. Uh, mm, then we will see other computer vision tasks. Uh, classification recognition is not only the computer vision task that is uh, usually performed or of importance. So we also see about uh, say uh, detecting faces or detecting objects. Uh, we also see recognizing some different conventional methods for recognizing. In uh, process of uh, mm, discussing these methods, you will also be get introduced to uh, some of the uh, new techniques which are of uh, not mm, useful in the field in general, not necessarily for that particular problem that we discuss or particular uh, task that we discuss. Uh, for example, say uh, principal component analysis is widely used in many of the machine learning and a few other concepts of dimensional reduction and so on. Uh, so we will see that what is it and how is it helpful and so on. Similarly, other uh, few other uh, methods and techniques. Uh, even mean shift is used for uh, tracking, for segmentation and so on. We will see some of the ideas. They have emanated from uh, different, different fields. So we will try to put together and then discuss uh, those uh, particular topics there. Now, then we will also see uh, the recognition part is roughly uh, mm, uh, done with the classification, detection, recognition and tracking. And uh, reorganization, as I mentioned, is usually uh, mm, which pixels are to be organized as a uh, particular class of objects in an image. It's not just uh, lab labeling a particular uh, sample or a particular, uh, mm, the whole image. It is uh, mm, labeling, uh, grouping different uh, samples together to a particular class. That is referred to as reorganization or segmentation, more specifically. So we'll see some simple methods to uh, some reasonably elegant methods for the image segmentation. Uh, and then we will also see when we have a video, so usually there are a few things of importance. So video processing is also of uh, mm, uh, importance in computer vision. The reason is uh, there can be different inferences that can be made with video alone or multiple uh, frames, um, taking multiple frames together. So that we discuss uh, in the uh, global and local motion estimation uh, module. Uh, optical flow and then uh, uh, using some of the transformations to uh, mosaic the images and so on. So that there are importance not just in uh, a um, uh, like computer vision, they are also important, they have good importance in several other fields. We will see with some examples even later. And then the finally we will conclude uh, so probably uh, the course with the 3D reconstruction wherein we try to see uh, what's the, uh, say from the projected images that we have uh, are only from the two dimensional representations of the scene, 3D scene, can we get our infer some inference on the 3D scene. Uh, so we will discuss some of the uh, stereo, uh, like uh, the passive methods and active methods. Passive methods means there is no light source and uh, active methods means there is also a projector or some light source to help us to, uh, 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 3D reconstruct, reconstruct the scene better. So we will see, for example, LIDAR is with an active method for 3D reconstruction. So, and uh, structure from motion is a passive method. So we'll see some of these uh, in the discussions. This is the overall course content uh, we plan to go. Uh, in this uh, lectures or in this course, as I mentioned, I will not be discussing on the deep learning uh, deep learning uh, perspective or deep learning uh, methods for segmentation, uh, any other detection, uh, 3D reconstruction and so on. Only for classification, we will give an introduction on how it can be done. So probably in the later courses, you will be uh, learning those uh, topics. Hmm? Those who are very eager to learn and uh, implement in uh, many projects, you are most welcome. And uh, in, like in addition to knowing these basics and uh, these topics, conventional methods, 
uh, and with the basic implementation of these things, you can also um, uh, try to learn a few aspects of it and uh, apply and uh, appreciate uh, the uh, differences as well. And so, as I mentioned, this is the evaluation criteria that we follow or to assess uh, um, you in the course. Uh, so, quiz one, quiz two, 15, 15%, final exam, 35%, I'm thinking. Usually, 40% is needed in final exam. So given that it's a uh, reasonably programming intensive course as well. So I have put uh, some uh, more uh, percentage to programming assignments and mini project uh, and class tests will be for 10%. As I mentioned, there will be, they will be uh, fill in the blanks or uh, object to Moodle tests. So we will see now a, a evolution of uh, um, the field overall. So um, as I mentioned, uh, the computer vision has uh, different uh, um, uh, flavors uh, in terms of its understanding. Usually from the, uh, even from the human brain, uh, the, uh, in terms of the making inference, uh, processing is referred to as low level vision. Uh, image processing usually considered to be a low level vision task. And then mid-level vision is to organize and so on, and high-level vision is to make inferences. Uh, so we uh, see the evolution of uh, imaging devices and image processing first, and then move on to the discussion on computer vision uh, field. Of course, uh, both uh, go hand in hand because uh, it's not that only after evolution of image processing methods, computer vision goes are. Uh, so some of the methods in image processing also have been evolving, in fact, image processing, machine learning, computer vision, deep learning, these are all evolving together. And so we, the, this, uh, some of the methods of <clears throat> each of the field are applied in uh, other fields and uh, they have equal importance or reasonable importance in uh, contributions as well. So the interest in image uh, processing has come mm, from the satellite images. So early uh, 1940s, huh? so um, early 1900s, uh, so there is a good interest in terms of uh, um, acquiring the images, uh, information through satellite images. And uh, when the images are either uh, acquired in satellite, ima satellite uh, imaging devices, like uh, synthetic capture radar uh, devices or any okay, image capturing devices in satellites, or when they transferred. Mm, so because of both regions, uh, in, during the acquisition, as well as during the communication uh, from the um, satellites, there used to be uh, heavy noise that gets added to the images. And uh, the uh, information in images used to be quite uh, like uh, 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 blurred or quite uh, 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 noisy. Uh, and it is uh, difficult to uh, infer what is there in the image without doing any basic processing. So that's where the interest for image processing has started. Sometimes the, there are some good uh, um, uh, regions for uh, the image being very uh, like uh, with artifacts and so on. The artifacts would have formed because of the imaging device itself. So we know some phenomena because of what reason this artifacts uh, has be, become formed or um, uh, how do we remove these artifacts through inverse processes. So the modeling was, has been a primary importance. Uh, so restoration and then uh, some enhancement both have played very uh, vital role in the early development of image processing. So, <clears throat> so image enhancement and image restoration. Uh, image enhancement uh, is mainly to understand or uh, see uh, how do we improve uh, the um, image to make it better visualize for a human uh, interpretation. So if you would like to make either for uh, our interpretation or for visual uh, mm, uh, look, so how do we enhance the details in an image? That's enhancement. And knowing the forward process and undoing that forward process through mathematical modeling, that is usually is referred to as restoration. So if we know the phenomena by which it is corrupted and if we uh, try to undo that, so that's the restoration. So as I mentioned, the satellite image processing is the first uh, field to motivate or the drive the image processing. And then even the uh, mm, defense also has good interest, considerable interest in terms of both image processing and speech processing as well, um, because uh, that has a potential in terms of uh, 
uh, say uh, the information may not be obvious to all and only the uh, concerned persons know how to make that information uh, retrieve or that information. So um, uh, they uh, had a reasonable interest. So, and then subsequently their uh, devices, amazing devices has started to come. Uh, and then uh, there is a cost effectiveness in these devices as well. So there is a evolution, uh, great uh, like exploration or uh, exploitation of using many uh, uh, image uh, acquiring uh, devices, uh, image acquisitions and image processes. So then in 90s, uh, roughly 80s to 90s, there is an interest of uh, bringing uh, feature extraction and uh, classification together for processing the images better. So evolutionary computer vision in the sense that, uh, say, kind of uh, bringing uh, feature extraction methods to extract boundaries, to extract uh, um, object uh, fee attributes, and so on through processing. And then uh, evolving with the uh, learning methods or classification methods like neural networks, support vector machine and all. And so has been in uh, very great uh, importance and partial in 1980s to 90s. Uh, and then in 2000s, uh, there is a 19s to 2000s uh, and um, there is a good interest in terms of evolving very good feature extraction methods and interpretation methods and so on in uh, computer vision mainly. Of course, in video processing and so on. And uh, after 2000s, there is a good interest in uh, bringing uh, deep learning and uh, um, other learning techniques into the computer vision. Of course, with a blend of uh, conventional methods. So this is other uh, um, view on uh, the computer vision developments. This is mainly uh, um, uh, on the computer vision methods. Previously is more uh, um, uh, focused on image uh, processing developments. Here is more focused on the device, little bit of uh, device development, hardware development, and uh, computer vision algorithmic developments. So at the initial stages, uh, say if uh, the there are encodings, how do we re have a reading devices you know, such that uh, they are only known to the uh, readers with those reading devices? And then slowly uh, in 1960s uh, to 70s, there is a uh, uh, good interest in terms of uh, having amazing devices with the CMOS and the CCD sensors. And uh, for subsequently with uh, different color filters, um, putting together, understanding a little bit of human uh, vision aspects or uh, human brain uh, and human vision and uh, bringing some of those aspects into the amazing device formation and then analysis as well. Uh, so in 1960s, even in computer vision, there is a good interest uh, driven from the uh, human uh, capabilities. So in fact, in 1960s, a summer project by uh, a Professor David Marr was given to a MIT student uh, to uh, reconstruct the 3D shape or information from the images. So that was uh, later known to be a very tough problem. Uh, however, initially it was thought uh, quite uh, easy or easy to do. Uh, so then uh, there was an in, uh, like a interesting pursual on bringing 2.5 sketches and then 3D sketches and so on uh, to better uh, infer from the from the uh, um, uh, uh, scene or from the uh, um, uh, images are from the doc, um, from the uh, uh, like the uh, uh, description of the image in scene. So uh, later in 2009 or uh, around, so uh, 3D uh, devices uh, came into uh, play and they are uh, of good interest. So um, from the 2D uh, image, uh, devi amazing devices like cameras and color cameras, all those things, uh, the interest has uh, been uh, in uh, 3D devices as well. Uh, so um, they used to use uh, IR sensors uh, together with the imaging sensors to uh, assess the depth information as well better. So and then subsequently now there is a good interest in RGBD devices and uh, there are good RGBD devices as well, which will give both uh, 2D information of the scene as well as the 3D information of the scene with the reasonable accuracies. Uh, in computer vision methods, Algorithms, so the, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, interest um, has started on uh, um, uh, making inference from the images or from the sketches uh, in, to the, in 1960s. 
later uh, there is a uh, the difficulty of it is understood and even the name ai also coined i think uh, around uh, 1970s uh, and then uh, later uh, the image processing also has evolved uh, to a good extent and then again in 1980s uh, the interest bringing uh, um, a little bit of active uh, stereo methods to extract the depth information uh, was in focus uh, and then uh, the uh, understanding uh, the 3d information together with um, say localization and uh, mapping uh, were of interest say um, uh, through evolution of uh, um, both vision and the other devices like gps and so on uh, in uh, the uh, in computer vision uh, the initial uh, breakthrough um, in in terms of the algorithms are the major breakthrough in terms of the uh, large scale processing uh, of detection recognition uh, or identifying the same object in any images across large uh, images has uh, been demonstrated only in uh, 2000s so that is through scale invariant feature transform so there is a, a very good work by david lowy professor david lowy uh, to uh, find out the key uh, points are the information uh, resource points in an image and then uh, there is uh, a parallel work on understanding uh, what kind of features to extract at given location or at different locations so both put together has uh, enabled uh, for uh, identifying say signboards across a video or across the large scale of images and then uh, also identifying different objects however the detection accuracies were quite low uh, it's not easy to detect a, even a face uh, for that matter uh, or to detect any person or any uh, different object uh, so uh, given an object we can't defend detect seamlessly uh, during 2000s so then there is an interest to say for example to reverse detection of objects so there was a notion that uh, um, uh, not just uh, we should look at uh, a, a different all parts together or um, different parts uh, as a complete different piece of information. So there are some interest on the parts based model. So how do we put the inference from different parts together and we use uh, for inference. Uh, so either for detecting the humans or detecting any other objects and so on uh, or recognizing and so on. So that uh, that uh, uh, that's uh, somewhat similar uh, to bag of words in uh, natural language processing. That is referred to as bag of visual words, and there is a good interest and uh, developments in terms of the uh, stereo methods and so on, uh, parallelly. Uh, and then in uh, 2004, other uh, pioneering work is on face detection, uh, detecting the faces almost in real time. So, um, so far uh, till that time, uh, detecting face, uh, faces uh, was uh, in real time is uh, not uh, possible or not feasible. So after development of this face detection method uh, by Vaila and Jones, uh, uh, the cameras has inherited with that features, smart features started inheriting. Uh, and then now all face detection is uh, majorly done through this uh, face detection by Vaila and Jones. Of course, in 2010s onwards uh, and 2012, majorly, uh, the deep neural networks has come into the computer vision. And uh, so they have pervaded the, uh, almost all computer vision tasks now. Uh, so this is the brief uh, history of computer vision. Uh, we will try to understand in, these in the subsequent lectures uh, in more details of uh, some of the methods uh, in these uh, key developments of computer vision. So any questions uh, in this uh, discussion? Okay. So then let us me let us move on. So we will start again from the uh, um, basics, uh, how the computer visualizes an image and what we need to do uh, in terms of algorithmic development or in terms of the uh, um, uh, both bringing the uh, intuition and other things into the play, uh, how the computer vision can uh, make the inference from the images or from the videos. And that's the objective that we discuss. So assume that we have a, uh, this is just a small example to reiterate uh, the, uh, that 
uh, the steps that we have discussed for making inference are very essential. So for example, here there is a bike and we want to distinguish an image of a bike from an image of a car. So what are good features is a person. So shall I take say two pixels here and here, okay, and then plot them, the intensity values of these uh, two pixels. And from that, uh, so say, just based on the intensity values in these two pixels, can I make a decision or make an inference that this is a bike or this is a uh, mm, car? That is the question. So what to do that, what we have done is, pixel one intensities we have written in the x-axis, pixel two intensities in the y-axis. So now pixel one intensity say assume that this is in scale zero to 255. So assume that this is 50. So pixel one intensity for this particular one particular bike, okay, why a particular bike image is uh, 50 here. Okay, pixel two intensity is uh, say uh, it is uh, 30 here. So I have put together pixel one and pixel two intensities uh, together representing the sample of or the image. Okay, so that image of a bike or whatever the image that is just represented by pixel one and pixel two intensities. So this is one bike or one, yeah, I have taken an image. I just noted the pixel one intensity and pixel two intensity at this particular location. Okay, so I am not changing the locations. At this location, I'm just taking the intensity values and from that I'm representing the sample. This is considered as sample because uh, I would like to make an inference from this image, okay, image sample to which class does it belongs to? That's the question. So I have put uh, different uh, pixel one and pixel two intensities for different samples here. First sample, second sample, third sample, and so on. Now the question is, okay, is this a good, good representation? So as I mentioned, the initial uh, investigations on uh, uh, the inference has made uh, started from the representation of the image or this presentation of the scene. Okay, so how well we represent to uh, infer it better. Uh, so it is also a kind of representation of sample here. So do you think this is a good representation to separate uh, the or uh, infer the bike samples of the images, bike images separately from the car images? Do you think is it a good uh, representation? Hmm? No. No. It's yeah, the reason, is, the reason is? We can't easily separate them. And even if we do, error will be lot. Right. Uh, the see some bikes may have different color here see the placement itself may be slightly different and so on so because of that instead of black it may be white sometimes okay and then i may have different different colors here so because of all this actually it is not a good uh, attribute to represent these samples now the investigation uh, as i mentioned was to find out which are good attributes so for example bikes and cars if you want to separate what do you think are the good attributes so the good attributes are something like the wheels, handles, and so on. So that's what is done here. So they have counted the number of wheels and uh, handles. So if we see, for example, the number of wheels and uh, handles are this many for, uh, say, uh, they based on whatever the count they have done or quantification they have done, the number of uh, or size of the handlebar versus the number of wheels or uh, the size of the wheel is uh, sketched here okay, or put here. So uh, do you think this is much easier uh, features or attribute uh, to represent the samples and classify? Mm. Yes or no? Yes. yes. The reason is uh, they will separate the uh, samples of both classes. So, uh, uh, so what are good features is the question. So what do you think? Anyway, we will discuss on some of them in the subsequent uh, slides and uh, subsequent uh, lectures. But what do you think are good features? So I have an image here. Okay, I just want to represent that better. So what do you think are good features for an image? That shows more variation for different samples. Okay, so I assume that that's very good. So uh, I have say, uh, I just want to say uh, recognize face. Okay, our face versus non-face. Okay, that's what I want to classify. I have a patch. Okay, let it be 30 cross 30 patch. Okay, uh, my objective is to classify face versus non-face. Okay, this is the classification I want to do. So now, the uh, what you mentioned as good features are, uh, so that distinguishes or differentiates what uh, you have mentioned 
Differentiate. More variation. Variations across samples for sa classification tasks across samples of different class. Okay, so that is very good point. What, what any other points? Any important things that we should note or we should have for a uh, mm, good uh, mm, for saying that they are good features. For same class, uh, they should be grouped together. Very as good. Well, as well. Okay. So uh, this is referred to as low intra class variability. Okay. Intra class means within the class. Okay. And then low intra class variability is one thing previously whatever we have mentioned is differentiate uh, the uh, variations across uh, samples of different classes that is referred to as high inter class variability okay so interclass variability has to be high and intra class variability has to be low any other uh, mm, any other features that you think if good feature or uh, a good feature extractor sh ex extractor should have mm, any one more feature or any one more uh, important uh, mm, importance the feature extractor should have or features should have. Hmm? See, uh, this is fine, but actually I want to say my job is not always to perform classification. Okay, I, I want to know even for classification. So this is a this is very, uh, um, uh, very high level uh, inference of a feature. So here is a face, okay. Uh, and then here is uh, some car or whatever. Okay, so what feature do you consider as good feature? Uh, so I, you said uh, these are all differentiate in within the class. They should have the same features. Okay, across the class, different features. That's all fine. This is a high level description of features. Okay, but what uh, um, feature extractor should I use here? To uh, what kind of feature should I have? Is a question. In sense, uh, uh, with respect to the object uh, at hand, or with respect to the uh, um, uh, task at hand, what kind of features do you think that we should have? Any input? Eyebrows, nose, outline. What is that? Eyebrows. Okay. Also, no nose, outline. Okay, so uh, um, what you're saying is uh, somehow we should have to capture this. No? So to say that it is a, a face or not, correct? Yes, yes, sir. yes, fine, good. So what else? So there should be some uh, features which will describe the object. Okay, so the feature should be describing the objects. Uh, Okay, so in general, say you have seen here a particular application and saying that uh, eyebrows we should take as features. I have 10 classes now, not just one class. Okay, and I want to uh, distinguish all 10 classes. So what are generic features that will uh, that describe an object? What are the generic features do you think that describe an object? Hmm? Edges and corners. Yeah. In some sense, the shape of the object has to be captured. So there has been a good investigation in these lines. I will discuss anyway in more details later. Okay. In some of the, uh, um, when I discuss about a particular uh, um, uh, methods, uh, but we should have some features, okay, which will have actually capturing the edges, okay, and then the shape information. Okay, in addition to the uh, intensity information. Okay, so you can think more on these lines. 
So after extracting the edges, there has been good work in terms of uh, bringing or giving these uh, features to a different classifiers, as I mentioned, uh, kind of neural network, supported vector machine, and any other classifier, nearest neighbor classifier, and so on. So and then performing basic classification tasks. The initial investigations are success uh, in classification is in uh, optical character recognition, then later subsequently in handwritten character recognition. Okay, optical character recognition means uh, in sense that um, bringing, uh, say, from the printed letters, how do we uh, you know, categorize into different characters or different digits? And then from the handwritten digits, uh, how do we do that? That is handwritten character recognition. So um, uh, these, uh, the initial uh, um, like systems uh, for uh, character recognition and then digit uh, recognition are uh, well used. Uh, for sorting out the uh, um, postal uh, envelopes and so on. Uh, so this is one of the demonstrated application uh, and its initial uh, spin-off uh, from the computer vision community. And then uh, the biometrics are the other uh, area where the uh, computer vision has been very well explored and widely uh, uh, has proven its importance. So identifying uh, through uh, fingerprint, face, iris, etc., different uh, persons, uh, verifying or uh, recognizing a person. Verifying means whether it is the same person or not. Recognizing means say, I have a several uh, faces, I want to recognize who is who. And then detecting the objects. This also has been a very important and uh, um, uh, celebrated application in uh, of computer vision. So identifying different objects, at least some of the objects uh, that are um, well known. Uh, and then uh, these are uh, recognition of fingerprint and face. So these are all in place in several devices, as you know. So uh, once we have a particular task, as I mentioned, there has been several challenges, okay, in uh, and uh, several similar tasks that are of importance. So for example, here, so instead of detecting the faces, can I detect heads, for example, just based on the head? Uh, so the methods that are used are uh, slightly different and there are some commonness as well. Uh, and uh, the application of uh, these methods uh, is there pervasive in many fields, not just in computer vision. Uh, and we will see some of them in the subsequent discussions. So many of these developments are also driven by uh, good data sets uh, in terms of uh, for algorithmic development as well as for validation. Uh, because uh, <clears throat> As I mentioned, the feature extraction and uh, uh, after feature extraction, uh, learning-based methods or classification-based based methods with learning are widely used for many of the computer vision tasks. To perform that, what we need is the reasonable data sets. So computer vision has also been driven since uh, 90, uh, 90s and then 2000s mainly uh, to have very good data sets for performing our uh, learning. Uh, different computer vision, uh, evolving computer vision methods. So there has been a good in improvement in the recent years because of deep learning uh, and very good data sets for uh, um, uh, training these deep learning models. Uh, and they surpass the previous uh, um, conventional methods as well. We will see some uh, minimal discussion of it. But however, as I mentioned, understanding the basic methods is also equally important to see the elegance of uh, what, how the computer uh, uh, does inference uh, in a similar way to our uh, uh, inference, uh, how do uh, we interpret or how do we uh, bring in the human uh, analysis concepts into the uh, computer vision processings. Um, of course, these are also useful for uh, bringing uh, more and more developing better better algorithms with a blend of uh, both learning and as well as uh, the uh, um, uh, conventional methods. So other tasks of importance in computer vision, uh, as I mentioned, are uh, say semantic segmentation. This is referred to as semantic segmentation. What do we mean by semantic segmentation is we want to um, give a label to each and every pixel in an image, not just to a sing, uh, the whole image. So for example, if this is the image given, a classification uh, algorithm or classification uh, task in computer vision tries to say whether it is a cat, dog, or a person of uh, um, uh, the class of importance. 
just highlights the class of impatens. Whereas this uh, here, the segmentation or semantic segmentation here, what it is trying to do is uh, say exactly label all the pixels in the image to either clad class or the grass class, okay, or sky class, mountain class, and so on. So we would like to give a label, pixel wise label, uh, the image. And this is much more uh, difficult task compared to performing the classification task, as we can naturally understand. Uh, giving the uh, overall assessment is uh, quite uh, simple for the image as well. Uh, however, at what exact pixels the cat is occupied and what are the other pixels uh, so filled with. So this is of importance uh, and difficulty, much more difficulty than the classification task. So this is object detection, uh, referred to as object detection. Object detection refers to as localization in addition to classification. Localization means exactly in which location the object is there, in addition to saying what object it is. And then usually localization is done with uh, the uh, label, uh, say with the exact bounding box, a rectangular bounding box putting onto the uh, object and then uh, describing it with way initial uh, star x, y location and then the height and width of the object bounding box. So it is essentially x, y and then height and width um, uh, are used to uh, to represent an object uh, and this is referred this is essentially done through both classification and the localization together because uh, we also want to tell what the object is not just localizing the objects in an image and the uh, subsequent developments are also in uh, bringing object detection in a large scale so not necessarily a single object we may have several objects of uh, interest and we would like to uh, give or the uh, bounding box labels to each of the objects, uh, the x, y locations, and then the uh, height width uh, of the objects. So we would like to uh, um, uh, label all the objects of interest uh, with their x, y, and h, w. And we would also like to tell what class these objects are. Uh, this is referred to as instance segmentation. Instance segmentation is like semantic segmentation, but here, the uh, objects of interest are only uh, given pixel-wise labels, and each instance is different from other instance. Here, for example, three, two dogs, if they appear, um, each dog is different. Mm, so in terms of its uh, label here. So whereas instance segmentation, if I perform, all dogs will get a same label. Okay, and then there is a combination of both the instance segmentation and semantic segmentation, panoptic segmentation it is referred to. So where we give the label for the background, um, yeah, like in semantic segmentation fashion, and for the foreground in instance segmentation fashion. So I will show some couple of, couple of the uh, challenges in performing these uh, tasks. Mainly, I take a task of detection. What do you think is anyway? We uh, show some of the uh, slides later. So before I flash on some of the slides, what do you think are the difficulties in performing object detection? Say I want to detect a uh, um, the cat or a, uh, any object of interest. So what do you think is the difficulty that we may have in real scenarios? Can you highlight few of them? Can you think and highlight few of them? Say I have a maze here and then I want to detect where the cat is. Okay. Cat may occur in different, different ways, right? So I have an image here. Okay, there is a cat here. Okay, and there is a small tail of the cat here. Okay, there is a uh, cat with a different color here. So what do you think are the challenges in general like that? So in object detection or in general for any computer vision task, what do you think are the challenges? Hmm? Multiple objects overlapping sometimes. Okay, very good. Multiple objects. Okay. And then there can be objects, overlapping objects. Oh, when there is a uh, object of interest is overlapped, it is called occlusion. Okay, what other, uh, what do you think are the other uh, challenges we may have? Partial uh, object is there. Yeah, visibility is only partially it can be there. 
Okay, that is also considered considered as partial occlusion. Okay, occlusion is not in the field of view. Or say that object is not in the field of view. Okay, that is partially visible. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Maybe the angle of the object is from different uh, side or something. View of the object. Keep varying. Okay, any other answers? What are the other challenges? Sir, example, if there is a cat body and a dog face is put on it. Okay, so that is fine, but we are uh, assuming currently. Uh, so of course, that that challenge also will come in future. Uh, but uh, currently, we are assuming natural uh, scenes. So we are not assuming uh, the uh, um, uh, like synthetic objects or synthetic images. Mm, of course, that is also a uh, of course even a natural scene also can be like that when the face is occluded, for example. And the remaining part is of uh, some other object and so on. Okay, uh, different objects together. Essentially, deformations in the sense that, uh, say, like uh, different view uh, points, the object also may be at uh, with the different deformations. Okay, so a yeah, um, uh, yeah, dog can look like a cat with its deformation, or uh, mm, and so on. Okay, any other things? The rotation. Okay, so rotation when we want to detect, especially rotation. Okay, that's also there in view. Okay, what else? See, object is far and the number oh, of pixels. Very good. Time. Object is very far. Okay, some objects may be far, some may be near. So it comes to scale changes. Okay, what else? See, you are all thinking of uh, mm, the uh, mm, object as is, but you should also think of uh, mm, the camera and uh, the uh, mm, background with which we are recording. Hmm? Okay, so we will see some of them. See here the uh, mm, uh, we will see one after the other. Uh, here you can see the challenge. What is the challenge here? Challenge is uh, this is just an example. So we want to find out a query block. Okay, uh, in the uh, other image. So uh, this is the target image. From that we want to find. Sometimes black and white query image may be there, and target uh, color image may be there. So some such things also can happen. So, however, here assume that we want to find out in grayscale, okay? And grayscale target is given. Case grayscale query block is given. So now this is the query block, and we want to find out. So what can happen? Uh, so here, compared to the earlier one, what do you think is the difficulty here? So this is the in this image it is easy to find out. So in this image it is easy to find out. But in this image, if you want to find out, there is a color variation, intensity variation from here to here, okay? So intensity variations also play a wider role. These are referred to as photometric variations. Here, what is the difficulty? Here it is. What is the difficulty here? Oh, scale variations. The object is of much higher scale. Okay, query is of much higher scale, but the uh, face is of smaller scale. Oh, here it is rotation. Here it is noise. Okay, like that there can be several challenges as we discussed. Uh, so uh, we will uh, see some of the uh, computation task demonstrations. Uh, mm, probably uh, mm, I will uh, mm, uh, in a couple of minutes I will complete this discussion and then uh, we will in the next class we will start on the other uh, uh, like discussing on the uh, second module. Uh, so these are just to give you illustration on what can be done with computer vision. So here, if you want to mosaic, say for example, this is one image we have taken and other image is like this. So you want to mosaic and create a panoramic view of a scene. So how do we do that? We will see later how exactly we do, but this is what is the mosaic image, okay? 
so essentially we take we need to take overlapping regions and see what can be done from that so this is a big mosaic that's created so this is also useful to identify the same region again say if a automatic driving and so on if you want to perform automated parking and so on we should uh, match every time so how do we do matching uh, a particular image with respect to the other image okay that also can be done through identifying the key points like that and then identifying the correspondences okay so this is another ap application or example so uh, identifying the same region or same uh, topological uh, place uh, so again and again same uh, um, object or same region from the images so this is an example of bringing uh, um, the mosaicing together with the phase detection uh, so this is an example of uh, say you can see there is a motion between the two so how do we uh, uh, assess how much is the motion and where exactly the motion has happened this is referred to as optical flow so that this indicates uh, in which direction the movement has happened how much a, um, each pixel has moved in the scene this is referred to as optical flow as i mentioned so we'll see some algorithms for this okay so we can exactly quantify how much a movement each pixel has um, so here you can see this is an example of uh, say motion estimation uh, applied to say cloud um, cloud images so you can see clouds how much they are moving okay in which direction move they are moving oh from which place to which place they are moving and so on okay so this is a uh, both together with motion estimation and few other aspects of uh, grouping for example segmentation and motion estimation together similarly this is another application this is referred to as visual tracking uh, wherein uh, we would like to match uh, each instant in, in, uh, each object at across different frames also oh, yeah, the instance of uh, the an object at across different frames we would like to match so this can this also finds application in different fields uh, so in the first frame we may give a bounding box and we would like to see where it is or not where it is in all subsequent frames so this is tracking the pose so we would like to know what uh, a person is uh, doing so in terms of say uh, mm, either jumping uh, playing or whatever so this is uh, this is also a kind of tracking key points uh, and this uh, this is regarding the reorganization example so we would like to as i mentioned uh, different uh, group different regions into different groups uh, and then label them as yes, tiger sand grass and water here and then uh, exactly identify the bounding box pixels and then give the contour separate that segment that are um, region of importance from others so this has applications as i mentioned not only in computer vision but also in several other fields like medical imaging satellite imaging and so on so this is the uh, referred to as depth reconstruction so given the left and right images like two, we have two eyes uh, we capture the images from the left and right eye and uh, how do we use them effectively to get the 3d um, appearance of the scene that means we would like to know which object is near which object is far how much near how much far and so on uh, so we will see how do we do that in subsequent uh, lectures uh, this has application in autonomous autonomous driving and uh, many other fields uh, so this is also there are some uh, active methods as well as i mentioned that projecting some kind of pattern and infer the 3d uh, the shape of the object much more accurately uh, as i mentioned there are devices which give us uh, the 3d uh, mm, uh, using the uh, ir sensors and then uh, the time of flight sensors and as well as the camera sensors put together so using that we can again uh, recognize the pose recognize uh, the object and so on better of course uh, now the uh, mm, gap between the computer vision uh, speech recognition uh, speech processing and then the uh, natural language processing uh, is very uh, mm, uh, like very vague and they are all smeared and then uh, each of them has applications in other so putting together a little bit of natural language processing we can give a description of the scene in terms of the caption so this of course we will not discuss in this course but uh, this is of interest in the computer vision community you know uh, so these are the references textbooks and then uh, this is said there are good video lectures also online uh, and uh, thanks to uh, ds uh, vice navi and suman and a few other students who have contributed to these works uh, and uh, the cited reference cited uh, images and uh, the works that i have taken in slides
Mm, thank you. If you have any quick questions, we can discuss. Any question? Okay. Mm, thank you then. We'll uh, see you again on Monday.